up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to HGS Pro Talk, your weekly Halo Esports podcast. This is episode 332 for the week of March 24th, 2024. The title of this week's episode is A Delightful Insight into Arlington. My name is Josh, a.k.a. JK Fire, and this week I'm joined by the man in the space station hoodie, Will, a.k.a. I, Mr. Mayhem, and our very special guest with the Passion United jersey in the background, PD. Oh, and hoodie. He, he, he's wearing the fucking P. He's got everything. <laughs> oh, my God. We're, we act like shills for merch over on this motherfucker, and PD's sitting over there with his Bastion United jersey <laughs> in the background, his Bastion United hoodie on, and his Bastion United fucking glass. Bastion I got United a mug taken over the house, PD. I got a coffee mug on the way. Took a while to ship. Hey. Oh, my God. God, he's going to be double fisting passion tonight to drinks over there. The coffee mug is going to go to work. It'll be at work. PD, how, Will and PD, how are you guys doing this evening? I'll defer to Will. Oh, all right. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Got some uh, Halo games in with Riz a little bit before the show, and we're, we're here now. How are you, PD? Oh, we're, we're, feeling, we're feeling extra passionate, actually. Ooh. At some point, I should go get something from upstairs. I had our work cleared out cabinets that hadn't been used in how who knows how long. And there were like inspirational books about like how to build a team, how to like be organized. And like one of them was called How to Lead with Passion. No I shit. Sniped, Ooh. Oh, I sniped that one. <laughs> sniped it. It's mine now. E360 cool. no scope the shit out of that one. Oh, absolutely. It's on the respawn screen. It's spawned in my, my living room. Oh my god. No, uh, we're feeling good. Halt, Happy is, beer. Halt is asking PD, where's Moose? Uh being an angel, an absolute angel, well behaved upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we finally get to the upstairs portion of it. Yeah, upstairs, unfortunately. Awesome. Um, well, gentlemen, welcome as always. And uh I guess I, I really don't have <laughs> My mind's kind of out of it, not going to lie. So I guess I'll just... Will, do you want to know what's coming up on this week's episode of the show? What do we got? Uh, the Quadrant Major tickets are were, they were technically available earlier today. Then they sold out. And more will actually be available tomorrow. Um, Stronghold Solitude is fucking out of here. Finally. And then, of course, PD, as our guest, he's going to share his thoughts on HS Arlington. Um, he's going to talk about... Passion United, the team that was there that fought through the open bracket. Um, he's going to talk about casting, and he's going to talk about his overall thoughts for the event. So stay tuned for that, because that's going to be the topic of this week's show. Ladies and gentlemen that are tuning in live, welcome. Hope everyone's having a great day or night, whatever it may be. Riz, Holt, Ikuza, Barnaby Jones, Panda, Justin, PD, I see you're in chat as well. Juan, Ikuza, I already said that. I'm an idiot. John, absent welcome back thank you for the resub that is a night month resub you get a wow thank you so much oh and then hold on this is going to take me a couple extra button presses to get to now but we have another uh another individual that joined us welcome back danny phantom danny phantom so many fucking buttons to navigate. This is ridiculous. Jesus fucking Christ. Zev and Sunzel, welcome back as well. Hope you guys are having a great day. Is that the motherfucking PD? It is that. It is the that motherfucking PD. Riz with the 10 month resub as well. You get the woo. Thank you so much for the brand for the res, brand new resub. See, I can make it work. Saved it. Saved it. Thank you, Will. I did. You know, <laughs> it works every once in a while. Um, all right. Without further ado, I think we should just jump into some competitive news. First up, Super CC still hasn't been paid by Face It. Go figure. This is by Super CC. He states, I also still have not gotten paid. I assume that means nobody ha that won money from your FFAs has gotten anything. That's at least 15000 being withheld on a single word spoken on when anyone will get it. Face it, this is ridiculous. Do better. Yeah, face it. Get your fucking he head out of your ass and do something about it. I know that there was an individual who um, 
what the fuck am I trying to say here? There is somebody that works for face it that had reached out to super CC. And so hopefully they are figuring that out. But yes, I you're not wrong. Suspector also has been paid. I think, uh, I forgot which other pro it was, but there was another pro who like made a joking statement as well that like they haven't been paid a little bit. So yeah, it's fucking great. You know, fuck face it, figure that shit out. Titans Orlando land information. This is by LFT Halo. Uh, they are going to, it's going to be a $12,500 prize pool with an asterisk because the prize pool scales up with the more teams that are entered in. So, um, like depending upon the teams, it could be like 7,500 for the prize pool. And then first, second, third have breakouts. Accordingly, it could be a $10,000 prize pool with first, second, third with prize out with breakouts accordingly, or it could be a 1200, uh, a $12,500 prize pool with again, first, second, and third accordingly. It'll be in Orlando, Florida. It's May 17th through the 19th in 2024. And the days will be Friday. The 17th is a $500 FFA. Saturday, May 18th, the 4v4 competition begins. And on Sunday, May 19th, the 4v4 competition, of course, ends. It'll be on PCs. It'll be on PCs. There will be a 64-team cap. And here is what the team uh, passes will cost. The first tier, which is 16 passes, will be $225. And then if you wait, the second tier will be 32 passes for $250. And then the third tier will be 16 passes at $300. So if you plan on attending, get in as quick as you can. And there you go. It'll be a double elimination, best of fives. Okay. So there will be no best of sevens within the tournament. Kind of sad. Hope that changes. But at least we won't have like best of threes. You know what I mean? So best yeah, of that's, fives. That's what I was going to say. At least there's no best of threes. Yes. A little too quick. Too quick. Is it's the w. event. What's up, PD? Lots of W, no BO3s. I mean, you're traveling. That's right. And you're you're yeah. traveling across the country, potentially. Maybe the globe. Who knows? Maybe the globe. Four games of Halo, not enough. Um, Captain Mo, yes. Collect it was the it was G1s, if I'm not mistaken, as well. Um is the event open to spectators? Yes, and it'll be free to enter as well. So no uh no like tickets you need to purchase, which is again another W. And then there are ho- there's a hotel discount across the street from the venue, and you can tweet at Avanti Palms, A-V-A-N-T-I Palms. Use the link from the registration page for more information. Link to the tweet is included in the Google Doc of the show notes of the show, exclamation point, show notes in the chat. I'm assuming this is going to be streamed by LVT as well then? Yeah. It's a safe assumption. Yeah. If they don't, it's a really missed opportunity considering, you know... <laughs> That's what they do. It's, right, it's, yeah, yeah, it's what they do. So, yeah, hopefully they do. Yeah, awesome that we're getting another LAN event, really. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see the teams that show out for it. Um, apparently, it is in a, like, the venue that it's going to be in is at a brand new venue as well. So, like, it is being built right now. So, and um, it, it was Piggy or somebody else was, like, tw- uh, messaging about it. I forgot who messaged about it, to be honest. I, I, I don't want to throw Piggy's name out there if it wasn't him. Um, someone was replying to somebody in the tweet uh, because it looks like they like the setups are already there and like are already set up and ready to go, but the land isn't until a couple months from now. And so the question was like, do, do they just rent the venue out for months at a time or like what's going on here? And then I believe somebody replied with, no, they're actively building it out right now. So... That's why the things are there as they are right now. Um, Uncle Bobby with the 19 month resub, you get a woo! Thank you so much for the fucking resub, dude. Greatly appreciated. Watsy, welcome back as well. Good to see you. Next up, European Halo League announces merger with Atlas. This is by European Halo League and Atlas. European Halo League tweeted out, we've been so excited to finally announce our merger with Atlas. We're going to take HCS European Halo higher than it ever has been before, bringing you more events, more content, and more PD passion. Plus, we need it. More That's passion right. everywhere. You know what I will say, PD? I don't know if this is like, there, there's probably a term for it. Um, mm-hmm. As to like, you, you hear something once and then you hear it all the time. Kind of like you see a car 
in like that's the car you see all the time from now on. Whatever that term is, I think it applies to when I heard you talking about passion in your streams all the time. Because Agreed. not right, Will, because now it feels like everyone mentions passion at some point or another. And I just like to think that PD, you were the one at the forefront of all of all that. You were the one that spread the passion amongst everyone. I like to hope that I've, you know, definitely helped. I think once in the back of my mind, like this became a real thing in January, but it was a thought, you know, five months before that. Yeah. So I actually like was already saying passion and I just found there's passion everywhere because everyone plays, well, a lot of everyone, most people here play Halo mm -hmm. and every now and then they rage quit, they get upset, they get mad, but they play again the next day or the next week. They come back because they have passion for the game. So everyone brings up passion naturally. And uh, yeah, I, I've just started using it a lot more. <laughs> I, I think that's what it is. Uh, Holt says recency bias, and that, that could very well be it. It's just like, I swear to God, it's, it's all the time. It is all the time. So... Atlas put out a tweet as well, and this is what they stated. Atlas and European Halo League, more coverage, more events, and more Halo. Um, uh, Atlas and European Halo League have reached an agreement making a pivotal moment, marking a pivotal moment for European Halo. This alliance allows to deliver better experiences for players, viewers, and the freelancers that make our broadcasts possible. Shortly before the Arlington Qualifier, Arlington Qualifier, we opened discussions with EHL and Europa Halo about a combination of our resources with the aim to create an unmatched passion for the community we all belong to. We were sad to see Europa Halo decide to exit after seven years leading the charge, but that didn't deter us. Our goals have never been clear. People are at the center of what we do, and we will always push ourselves to improve and look for ways to do better. The first step on that journey will be provide more coverage of the EU HCS Open Series. That means A and B streams with no more duplicate matches. We'll have more to share soon. Stay tuned for updates. That is from Luke Mammoth Harrington, the Managing Director of Atlas Esports Limited. So yeah, good luck to them. Um, I saw somebody in chat uh, talked about... Hold on a second. Akusa says, honestly, that's huge for them coming together. Hopefully Tashi shows actual support for it. I doubt the HCS will. We know what the partnership program, I mean, we know what the grassroots program is about, and it's not that. So, I mean, besides like drops and whatnot, it's not going to be financial. Um, Then, one of the bigger news stories from today is that the Quadrant major ticket information has been released by Quadrant. Ticket sales. Pre-sale was today. I say was because they sold out. So um, from Cam Royal of the Quadrant team, he stated, pre-sale officially sold out. Keep alarms set for tomorrow. More GA and more VIP. Okay, so yes, they sold out of the tickets they had allocated for, excuse me, for today for pre-sale, but there will be more available tomorrow. Speaking of which, the general sale will be live Thursday, March 28th, which is tomorrow because we record on Wednesday. At 4 p.m. GMT, 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Okay? So 12 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Central, if you're in the Central Time Zone like we are. Based off how that pre-sale went, now we don't know how many tickets were available in that pre-sale, but they sold, like, apparently VIP sold out in literal seconds. So if you were planning on attending London, I almost said Arlington there. If you're planning on attending London, make sure you get your sale in like as soon as they go live because we are going to now talk about what the tickets include and that VIP ticket is easily the best package available that we've seen. I think bar none. I would, I would like to compare it to a world's VIP but it's half the price. Like world's VIP is $250. So it's half of that price. And honest to God, depending upon what's in that swag bag, we'll talk about in a second here. You might get more. So without further ado, here is the ticket information. General admission will be 30 euros. It's you get access to the event on all three days and you get an event lanyard. Okay. So they're not going to be, it doesn't sound like they're going to do the wristbands. It sounds like they're going to do lanyards. Good. Love that. VIP, 
120 euros, limited amount of tickets available. Okay. You get a private entrance. Now, I don't know what that fucking includes. Like, we know what happens in, like, VIPs have had separate lines before. So I don't know if that's what this is, if that is comparable to what's being mentioned here, or if it is legitimately a completely separate entrance. But regardless, they say private entrance, a dedicated viewing area of the main stage, meet and greet opportunities, a quadrant team jersey, and goodie bag. So you get a jersey included with your VIP ticket purchase. Again, this is half the price of a world's VIP ticket. You get a limited edition lanyard, a limited edition signed event poster, and a chance to play a show match versus the Quadrant team and creators. So a good amount of this, depending upon how they do it at the event, the, a, a, a good amount of this could be similar to what we've seen with VIP in the past with majors and whatnot, because we don't know what the viewing area looks like. We don't know what that private entrance actually entails, right? But the fact that you get a jersey, when jerseys typically sell for like 60 to $70 as it is, like U.S., the fact you get a jersey included and the price of the ticket's 120 euros. That's fucking crazy. So shout out Quadrant for that. And yeah, like I said, tickets sold out really, really quickly for pre-sale. And we don't know how many were available in pre-sale. Okay. So it could have just been a very limited amount. But regardless, tickets go on sale tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern time. So Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern time, 11 a.m. Central. If you get VIP, get it right away. And now, the biggest news story that happened. Stronghold Solitude is officially gone. This is by Halo Support and Tashi with a little snake bite stimulating statements thrown in for good measure at the end here. So... From Halo Support, they state, Strongholds on Solitude has been removed from Ranked Arena based on match data and community feedback. And then Tashi state, stated, Strongholds on Solitude has been removed from Ranked Arena and HCS rotation. We're working towards replacing and we'll have more to share on that later. The replacement may or may not be ready in time for London qualifiers. Ping Hines for any questions you might have. So before we get into what Snakebite was talking about, um, I just really want to, I want to quickly comment on something and then I want to get your guys' opinions as well. Um, the, when Tashi says the replacement may or may not be ready in time for the London qualifiers, I don't like that. It, I, I think that if you're going to remove something and snake bite talks about it too, but if you're going to remove something, you should have something ready to go right away. Especially when we're talking about like competition here and not just like the ranked playlist. But regardless, I'm happy it's gone overall. We we bitched about it for the longest time. We've, we've seen it firsthand how many times a, a fucking steamrolling can happen. So f personally, I'm happy to see it gone. Will, PD, what are your guys' thoughts on this? I mean, I'll just say, like, it's a double-edged sword for Tashi and the team. If they don't pull it and they wait until, like, the London qualifiers happen and then they have something ready right before the London event. And then it's like, well, why, why are you pulling it now? Why didn't you pull this before the event? Right. <laughs> you know? And then it's, you're, you're fucked either way. People are going to uh, like that and, or not like it. So I agree on maybe having something a little bit more ready or more detail on what's coming. Cause you do want to have something to replace that. Yeah. But I, I think no matter when you pull it, people aren't going to be happy about it because it was played at a major already. But we can all agree it needs to go. So at least I, I'm just looking at the W that it's gone and we'll get what we get in the future here and competition can be better moving forward. Petey? I've been complaining about it for a while. I think uh, anyone who's played with me, the second we load into Strongholds on Solitude, I'll either make a sarcastic joke about how much I love this game type, 
or I will just tell them I hate this and I need everyone's positive energy because I'm not going to be bringing it this game. So I, I'm glad it's gone. Um, on top of that, I understand the why isn't there something already ready or why didn't you make this decision earlier? But to play devil's advocate there, I think it just came to the tipping point where they were considering getting rid of it. And then that 250 to 30 or whatever the hell the score line was between Optic SSG happened. It's like, okay, enough's enough. Let's just nip this in the butt. It's got to go. Three? Was it three? 250 to three. Yeah, yeah 250 I, to three. Yeah, I said 30, even in my head, I thought it was, yeah, that's that's tough. So at least <laughs> yeah. I got a couple points. Um, just too snowbally, too ridiculous. I think it will be streets. I think they're going to buff up and uh, get streets back. I think that'll be the replacement. But at the same time, Devil's Advocate there, like how many game type and mode combos do we have? Like 18? A lot, yeah. Like, I don't know. What, what's the, what's happy to move on, but what's all the up in arms when we have 18 bazillion game types and mode combos? So what? They don't have one ready. We got 17 others. If you want to do a full scrim, it's going to take you a whole evening already still. Right. I don't um, know. I, bit of devil's advocate, but I, I'm not oh. that upset they don't have a replacement. Well, I'm with you there. Yeah, good good points. Good points. Um, seeing some people in chat talk about Bizarre wanting to come back, seeing uh, additionals oh, no. about... Uh, I agree. I don't want that back. Um, seeing people talk about wanting Streets Strongholds back as well. We talked about it during one of the after parties um, because we, we, we discussed the 250 to 3 game that happened at Arlington and then the discussion ha the discussion was what would you replace it with or what would you like to see in its place and one of which that we did talk about was uh street strongholds and i now that they've made the changes to streets i do think it could work out better because now that you have camo bottom mid and rockets have been removed i think you have a better opportunity to prevent a steamrolling type situation now the only thing that i say is th there's a caveat here is that spawns need to obviously be fixed like they can't and i'm not saying they haven't been fixed but i'm also not saying that they have completely what's up pd go ahead so what happened there they said it was because of the weapon the the bandit evo had yes. a different cone of influence than the br yes. so they gave it the same cone of influence yep isn't that an easy patch? Why isn't it fixed if they already did that? So it is should it a networking be. Networking update or something? Or? Right. So it should be as of oh, right, right now. That happened after. That was the Tuesday after the event. Correct. Correct. So as of right, right now, they should be fixed. Okay. Cool. But for, uh, from like clips I've seen and whatnot, maybe they're not, but I'm not saying they're not. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want. one live fire? Like, I've seen. There's been, it's been on live fire. It's also been on, I mean, it's been on streets. It, but again, it may not be indicative of the update. It may so be indicative of like what we talked about during that Arlington game where maybe they didn't clear out PD the way that they should have. It's just, I don't do I, that. I, I, right. I just don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. And I don't want to, I don't want to put something out there if I don't fully know. So. Based off the update, they should be fixed. I want to put emphasis on the should. Um. So we'll we'll have to wait and see. Beth with the forty seven month resub, you get a whoa! Thank you so much for the resub, Beth. Greatly appreciated. Steezy, welcome back. Good to see you as well. Um, Watsy, if I didn't already say it, welcome back to you. Stenny, welcome back. Spring King, welcome back. Hope everyone's having a great night. If I miss anybody, I apologize. Please know I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. And then, uh, so here's what Snakebite said about it being removed. In uh, the, the, the news segment we like to call Snakebite Stimulating Statements. He states, it's been crazy to read all the different opinions on the new network update. My game is 100% better and smooth, so I've been having a blast. But it's frustrating and typical to see we all can't just have the same experience. As for Solitude Stronghold's removal, it's not shocking because we could all assume it would be the next to go. Where I just don't understand or agree is not having a replacement and why go through the whole offseason practicing it and have it, the first, and have it at the first event to then remove it for playing the way it literally always has. Things are never going to be perfect when you're talking about competitive settings. 
But some more consideration to these things would be appreciated because now you have a scenario where if, even if we can all probably agree it was a bit too snowbally, the timing of when to remove it just doesn't look great. And you guys had mentioned that as well. So, but it that's the thing is like, hindsight's 2020 obviously we wished it probably would have been removed before the first event like before even the off season truly began i guess you could say before teams were scrimming but it is what it is now we look forward now we move on um personally i would like to see street strongholds back i i i've been seeing uh i also saw in the chat somebody said something about like catalyst slayer or something like that um not not to talk about that map or anything like that, but I don't think we see another Slayer. I think I think you have to put an objective for an objective here. Right, right. So, in yeah, so I would think it would have to be that. Yes, Voodoo. I yes, I know it is from 2050 Esports and not LVT. The additional information came from LVT, hence why they're the ones that are, that are in the show notes. But yes, I do know that the event is put on by 2050, like it is by 2050 esports being presented by LVT. One flag absent, get the fuck out of here. I'll ban you. How about that? No more ban. Would- Go ahead. Go ahead, PD. Oh, we're cooking. I, I just like where this is headed. <laughs> I was going to say, no more, no more banning PD. We're banning absent, ladies and gentlemen. I was thinking about that just today. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you were. <laughs> Uh, Daddy with the bit. Thank you so much for the bit. Hashtag bit by bit. Oh, Daddy asked PD. This is questions for you. Um, do you just wake up and piss excellence, or are you always that handsome? It's ever since I ran into Swool Daddy in Arlington. Really, <laughs> I think that was mm. that was when we turned for the good. That had to have been like one of the greatest experiences, like of all time. <laughs> we were having a great time. We were watching the grand finals on Sunday. Just sitting next to each other, just hamming it up. It was excellent. Next, would time, recommend ten out of ten. Did did he did he offer to drive you around? No. Oh, he should have offered to drive you around. That would have been even better, right, Daddy? Wouldn't now that have I'm been concerned. so much better? Oh yeah, why, he's absolutely should be he? concerned. <laughs> Riz says, "Hey, Daddy, did not kill me." Yeah, I know. He said, <laughs> "Oh no, is that why I don't want to get in his car?" No, so, oh man, you, you you should talk to daddy about the former, like last year's Arlington experience where daddy almost killed us twice, basically. Oh no. Yeah, it was, uh, it was an experience to say the very least. Let's just say that, but it, it was, it was all, it was all fun and funny. I guess you could yeah. say. Yeah. What's the safest spot in a vehicle? I'll sit there. Uh, not in Is daddy's back- vehicle. That's the safest spot. Not in that. Oh, so. All right. I'll walk. <laughs> Ubers. Got it. I don't know. I'm just giving him shit. So yeah, thank God stronghold solitude is out. Um, who knows what it's actually going to be replaced with. I would like, I think we can, I think we all agree that we kind of like to see if, um, stronghold streets could, could exist again because we know why it was removed in the first place. But now that the streets changes have happened again, spawn should be fixed. But if the, as long as they are fixed, I think it could work out really well. Rockets are gone now. Camo's there. Camo does not spawn right away. Like, I think it could work. But again, I've been wrong on things before. I did not think Forbidden would work. And then we see how Forbidden is and Forbidden works great. So who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. On the flip side, Josh, I'm curious. um, Because Streets Strongholds already exist. It could just be thrown in there. And they say they're working on something unless they're like tweaking the stronghold size or maybe placement a little bit. Yeah. I I think maybe are we getting a new map? Something different? I don't think we're getting a new map or else they would have explained. uh, They probably would have teased it. What's up, PD? Go ahead. (laughs) So I wasn't the only one around for this conversation in Arlington. I won't say who, but there's a couple of people that seem to think that strongholds on streets is coming back. Like, for sure, like, that was kind of a rumor that a, a couple people overheard, as well as the rig. Mm. The one with the rail gun in the middle is, like, yellow. From H5, the, yeah. The rig, yeah, from H5. So maybe, maybe that's a new Slayer they're bringing back. I think that one had strongholds as well. 
It did. I don't know what yeah. else modes that had, but who knows? It was just Strongholds and Slayer. Just Strongholds and Slayer? Who knows? It's fun to guess. Fun to guess. Or Oddball as well. Didn't it have Oddball too? Ooh, no, or not. Maybe. It, it, I mean, if the, if, the, if the map is still as open as it was, there's tons of playability. See, for me... Oh, man. I hated playing on the rig. I liked watching the rig. So, yeah. I still stand by, Will, that I just... If we're ever going to fucking do... I hate remakes, but if we're ever going to do a remake of an H5 map, bring back Coliseum. Don't don't fuck around with anything else. Just bring back Coliseum. It'll be great. Right. It'll be great. Like I don't Is that the one that was Flag and Slayer? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 that was a cool one. It was a that was interesting. Map. Frosty hit that clip right off the rip. Grab snipe, domes a bunch of people. That's right. That's right. We could see it. We could see that again in a different <laughs> fucking game. Or we could have new experiences, which would be even great, but even better. Or, or whatever. Bring back the pit slayer. PD. And now pit we're crazy talking. King. And pit crazy king or king of the hill. Okay, we don't need that one. Uh, we don't need that one. I played that in social the other day. Social doubles, crazy king. Who see, plays? I. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I am a fan of Empyrean Slayer. I, I genuinely enjoyed it. But again, like I think we again we all agree that if you take away an objective, you have to put an objective back. Like we're not adding another Slayer variant here. But I, w- I want to see like I loved Empyrean Slayer. I know that that shit slowed down to a fucking crawl. But yeah, man, I fucking those tense moments in that map, we saw so many crazy things happen in Empyrean Slayers that as a spectator, as somebody just watching it, I really loved watching it. So that's just me though. Um Steezy says Pit Slayer final score 23 to 14. That's yes. <laughs> you're not wrong. You're not wrong. It did slow down a lot. Spring King says, aren't you guys team owners? Throw your weight around at the owners meeting. Oh, my God. I missed that. Jesus Christ. Uh, Tiger Tom, yeah. welcome back. Have a great have a great night, Tom. Have a great night. Thank you for being here. Ikuza, you are fighting for that Catalyst Slayer. I think Catalyst worked way better as a flag map. I, I agree. Yeah, I don't think it worked very well for, as a Slayer map. The, the pros were not fans of the Slayer either. Yeah. See, I, I mean, then again, we've heard from pros. Like, we've heard at, I, in their streams that they have said that they would they would take Catalyst Flag back. Yeah. Like, because they, they got rid of the fucking... They got rid of the skewer, if I'm not mistaken. They got rid of the sword. Like... Uh, yeah, there's rockets some... and shotgun, maybe? Oh, I... I rockets, it, had two snipes. it had two snipes. At the back yeah, it's, got, it's, it's got two snipes now. It's got rockets and OS still. Yeah. So or is remove, it camo? I don't I, remember which one I think they have. Still OS. I mean, you could probably I, I, this is this might be controversial, but like you could probably take away rockets, keep cam like if, if it's OS already, put camo bottom mid. It kind of be like an Argyle situation, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it would literally like it'd be the same kind of setup as an Argyle, just in a different map. I I I think it worked great for flag, so Fuck it. Why no, not? Why did that one get taken out anyway? Because oh, because of everything else. It did have the heat wait. Yeah, did it have heat wave heat wave or shotgun? It had a graph hammer that or sword. It had sword. It was a sword and competitive. Yeah. Yeah. It had sword, and it had skewer. Then they reworked it. So they took it out and then reworked it and left it as a social. Yeah. Basically. I Interesting. Yeah, I I, I I think I'm not surprised to hear you say, Josh, that uh, people liked it. It was yeah. decent. It played. It played all right. Well, I'm just saying, like we've heard from literal pros from their streams yeah. that like they yeah. would be happy if Catalyst Flag came back. But yeah, I, I like I said, I don't know what the fuck their plan is. But PD, when you say that the rumblings were heard around like a rig remake, I don't fucking want mm. that personally. But that's it is what it is. Hey, don't shoot the messenger. No, you're fine. Like yeah. Yeah, fuck you, PD. It's all your fault. What the heck? It's all what your fault do? if this comes out. It's trying it, to spread knowledge. It's my hey, fault. I'll just, I, oh, if, it, if it comes out, I'm DMing you immediately. Hey, Josh. 
Did if you see it, the news? If it comes out, please which do. it wouldn't please surprise do. me at this point. It would not surprise me at this point because we I've also heard yeah. rumblings about a rig remake. But I'll just say this. If it comes out, it's a different kind of passion that's going to be thrown your way, Petey. Oh. Okay, a different kind of passion. I'll, not a great I'll, one. Not a great kind of passion that's going to be thrown towards you from me. I'll get the kindling. Start a fire. Yeah. Get nice and warm. Spring King says, Josh hates remakes more than t- uh, talk, uh, taking scrim results serious. You're not. I mean, no. I hate talking. I hate taking scrim results serious more than fucking map remakes. Because at least with a map remake, it's a <laughs> it can place differently within a different game where scrim results are literally just that. And they don't mean anything. All right. That's it for the competitive news. Uh, this is where we'd have roster mania. I'm not even going to bother pressing the button, but we don't have roster mania. What, what, what? Nothing. Nothing this week. Hey, Will, what do we have for roster mania this week? Fucking nothing. <laughs> it's time for your upcoming tournaments of the week presented by noobcom.com. Check out noobcom.com for all your Halo Esports needs. Saturday, March 30th and Sunday, March 31st, it's the Gamers Assembly LAN which is taking place to so go check that out if you're in that area. And that's it for the upcoming terminates of the week presented by noobcom.com. Check out noobcom.com for all your Halo hey, sports needs. Uh, well, scrim tournament what? league recaps and uh PD. We're going to talk to you about the Hydra gaming Queens Alliance two later on as in like pretty fucking soon. So will, what do we got Before I do tournament league recaps for DC steezy and chat. He says, boo, no roster mania. So, Here's your roster mania for the week. HRL first minion is going to be Zarners, Riznak, <laughs> oh my God. Snagu, and Mr. Mayhem HPT. There you go. There's your roster mania. On to tournament and league recaps. We have no scrims for you, but the results of the SWAT Nation Spring Fling 2v2 Snipers Tournament. In fourth place, we had Cat Smile, which was Young Guns and Marine. Third went to Mexican Joy. This was Mines and... Whatever this is supposed to say, I seven nine four eight. Second went to People's Champ. It was, I'm gonna say, Bueller. Bueller. Bueller? You know that one? It's Bueller. Bueller. Yeah, it's Bueller. All right. M and K, Young God. Okay, M and K player, nice. He won one of my doubles tournaments uh, a while back with Gunplexion, actually. <laughs> that's it. Turned that's into awesome. it was it was crazy. So they GA'd a bunch of things. Let's just say those GAs went out the window. Ooh. It got uh, spicy. It, it, ooh. Oh, yeah. Should have uh, clipped clip more stuff from that. We only clipped the, like, PG, like, normal stuff. There was none of the Fiesta nonsense. I don't know why, but oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> it was fun. Good times. They took the dub. Hey, congrats to them. And then uh, first for this tournament was Rajan Sharks, which was Ispar and Ambition 2. So... PD, I have a question for you before we move on here. Uh, as somebody who's hosted a tournament, right? If GAs are agreed upon by every team and then one team breaks them, what do you do as the organizer? So kind of taking the stance that, you know, your reputation precedes you. We leave it up to the players. We can't enforce. We're not going to be going into games saying, oh, he accidentally did that. He shouldn't have picked up that equipment. It's, you know, here's the maps. If you'd like to GA things, please agree upon it prior to the map starting. And let's just be honorable and have fun at the end of the day. We're just trying to keep the passion going here. We're not trying to start a fist fight online. Let's have a nice time. And it's up to the players, kind of how they want to facilitate that. It made for an entertaining grand final in the booth. We had a great time. Oh my god! <laughs> Things got crazy. What did the uh, did the losing team have a great time? That's that's what I'm wondering well, uh, at this point. Well, uh, so I I don't even know. I think someone picked up OS because they thought someone used the noob combo, or I don't even remember how it started. But once it started, is gasoline on the fire just everything was full go rockets were used on streets it was it was doubles and it was it was mayhem well it was mayhem. <laughs> hey let's go look at that <laughs> love that but did the losing team have a good time to answer your question they were good about it okay. i think they understood that you know they, it takes two to tango they did not do anything to put out the fire they accepted it and embraced it uh and uh i don't know i didn't hear anything about it they thanked me for the tournament and all was well they got paid quickly good 
Okay. There you go. Good shit. Good shit. All right. Well, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, last but not least, the Hydra Gaming Queens Alliance 2. And I'm going to have to zoom in on this graphic. And I still can't read those player names, but <laughs> in fourth yep. place went to what practice? PD, can you see him? Yeah, yeah, I've got I pulled it up on Twitter. So fourth place, what practice is Domino, Jessa Savage, Beliari, Taffy Go Lucky. Uh, third, John Halo fans. That's Command Station, Luna Rose, Savage Giggles, and Homie Hopper. Uh, second, Dial Ducks, who actually reset the bracket. Uh, so they forced the bracket reset in the grand final. Uh, that was Ultras, Zev, Pretty in Pink, and Ariza. And then first, Psycho Bandits, which is Roller, Kiddo, Pink Sakura, and Kath. Very nice. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thanks for jumping in. Um, no I love that this was, this was a draft tournament, right? So a lot of these people coming together for the first time, uh, maybe playing with people they don't, usually don't, and the competition was great. It was fun to watch. Yeah, it was electric. Uh, it's a uh, random, so it wasn't even a draft. It's just oh, if you're in the tournament, which was full, it was 16 teams, and they reworked the format after they listened to a ton of feedback, and I think they made a ton of good changes because uh, Lucinity or Sin and I casted the first one. They accepted as many people that signed up, which was like 21 or 22 teams, and it was best of fives, double elimination. So that turned into about a 13 hour uh, day. Uh, pretty late in the evening. Yeah. Um, this one was best of threes until the finals. Winners, losers, grands. Then it was best of fives with the bracket reset. I think this one might have clocked in around nine, nine hours ish, um, with a bracket reset, maybe nine and a half. Uh, but no, much more manageable, much smoother. Uh, I, I'm sure they'll still get some feedback, but no, Hydra Gaming's doing unreal stuff there, and Women of Halo obviously partnering with them for these tournaments. They're so freaking cool, and it's random. You have 64 people sign up, and you have no idea who's going to be on your team, and you have no control over it. Now, this did go to a bracket reset, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct, Petey? Absolutely. I, if I remember correctly, and I was there, uh, it was <laughs> 3-0 for the Dial Ducks, who came from the B-side, obviously. Yep. And then it was 3-1 Psycho Bandits, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, anyone in chat, but... It was an epic grand final. It really, really was. The other thing I want to add here, and I'm dumb that I didn't uh, gather the tweets, so I will make sure to do so and include them in the show notes for future reference. But if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was for this event, uh, PD, because you were talking about how it was completely random for um, teams that were the, the teams that were made, and I heard a couple folks talking about how because of that, a couple like some of the teams were just absolutely stacked. And if I'm not mistaken, it, it was Jen or somebody else from the um, Women of Halo community were talking about, um, or maybe it was Veronica or someone was talking about how moving forward, they have an idea of what they can do to like better average teams out to average skill level um, to make things a little bit more even whatever events take place in the future. Right. I saw there was some feedback that maybe every team should have an Onyx player. Okay. Just so when you sign up and the wheel decides your fate, there's a bit of balance. So each team has one stronger player, perhaps. Okay. Uh, I don't think they've made any decisions, um, but based on how many changes they made from tournament one to tournament two, I wouldn't be surprised to see them uh, make a couple tweaks, and that one, I think, was a big one. Um, but I'm not involved in that in any way, but I've seen the same things, uh, and it sounds like that was definitely a concern from some. Because you can get unlucky, and you know you get double first round, and you don't win a map, uh, because maybe you get unlucky from the wheel. Absolutely. So, yeah. Good feedback. Yes, good feedback indeed. The only thing we want, like, obviously, all we want is for, like, the competition to be closer, so... That'd be great. And the fact that it still ended in a grand final bracket reset is fucking awesome. So the the more we see of those, the better as well. So good shit. Amen. Good shit. Okie dokie. All right. Time for the topic. I think it's time for the topic. Will. 
Beautiful. Topic of the week this week. PD discusses Arlington. PD was there. PD had a team there. As a matter of fact, competing in the open bracket. PD was casting there for a little bit as well. PD was doing it all there. He was uniting passion in literally every capacity he possibly could. And uh, so PD, I, I guess realistically, the floor is yours here. Um, as somebody who was at Arlington, had a team there, was casting there, was just an attendee as well, experiencing everything that Arlington had to offer. What are your thoughts? Let's start with Passion United. Yeah. So quickly on the venue, I think before I get to Passion United, the venue was improved upon. Uh, I've seen this has been talked about, but in case you didn't know, there's a giant wall dividing main stage from open bracket. Yep. That was taken down. That probably opened up, you know, 10 feet because you know, the wall might have been two feet wide, but, you know, all the area on the sides of it. And then the featured stations moved to the far wall instead of the right wall. That opened a lot more room for open as well. So general housekeeping improved upon. Uh, the straight ripping booth, you know, nice more opportunity for people to get some merch there. Um, but then Pass United. Yeah, uh, bananas. Uh, I don't know if you noticed. I got a jersey. I got hoodie <laughs> got a glass my coffee mugs on the way um i could not be more pumped our first event uh, tough to imagine it going any better the boys are just all so great like in every regard they handled themselves so professionally um in terms of their preparation, their commitment, their focus, it's Atticus, Scuds, Maddie, and Palfius, Coach Clutch. Shout out to all of them. And we had Mark the Walls along for the ride. So if you check out our Twitter, our pinned tweet right now is like a 30-second highlight reel of like just quick hits as to things that happened at the event. We're talking like two seconds per clip to give you a feel for what the, the weekend was like. Um, might be another couple weeks before we get a full edit out. Uh, cause let's get real. Mike, Mark, he, I've said this before. The guy doing our video work has won an Emmy. So Mark, the walls is doing things real big things. Yeah. He's a legend Riz. So we're definitely not going to rush his creative process and we appreciate Mark for everything he does. But in terms of the gameplay, I know we've all, well, I don't know we've all, but it, it's been on this show. Yeah, the, uh, the Kratos <laughs> clip there, oh my where God. he got a little upset that we beat him. <laughs> Understandably, I think he expected to go further in the tournament. Uh, so we shut down a very, very good team in the elimination bracket in Kratos, Nemesis, Swish, and Hative. So those are some big hitters that have been on pro teams very recently. The boys were fired up, and uh, we ran into a bit of a buzz saw in the next round. We got a little unlucky. We played the well. It's not that we unlucky. We played the number one Australian team. We were going to play a good team next. Yeah. Um, but the way we lost was, I I know the boys know they could have made it like, not just past that round, but even the next one potentially. Uh, they lost in a game three after winning game one, uh, in an epic four three recharge King of the Hill. The last hill was almost played. It looked like perfect Halo by both teams. The last hill, the seventh hill, 4-3 victory, took like a minute and a half to win and was won by like seconds. Couldn't imagine a better environment. Um, and then we were up seven kills in the Slayer around the 35 kill mark. One of them got a sniper. I think it was Rice. W-R-Y-C-E, yep. I've learned. I talked to yeah. Dan, Ogre One online. Uh, I was asking him about him. Like, who was the sniper? And he's like, oh, he's M and K. So that I told the boys that, like, yeah, that makes sense. He was doing 180s and just clicking heads and just deleting us. Fuck. So we, we lost our lead, lost the Slayer, started slow in game three. Like, we were, I think, shell-shocked that we played perfect Halo for 70% of mm -hmm. game two. And then all of a sudden, it just swept, the rug swept under us. Uh, and excuse me, my passion's coming out. This is a little long-winded. Okay. Game three, um, yeah, a little shell shock. We gave him about 50 seconds of ball right off the rip. Like, they just took 50 seconds, 50 to nothing. We steadied, played it about even, lost that round by about 50, and then round two we lost by like seconds. So all things considered, that series easily could have went our way. Shout out to Rice, shout out to Fury. They played outstanding. Uh, and then we went back to the B&B &B after a team dinner. So we did go to a team dinner. It was a great experience. These guys, I'm, I'm telling you, all of them, 
just beautiful people. You want to be around them. They're great professionals. We had a nice team dinner. And then back to the B&B to watch you guys in your after party. I'm telling you, <laughs> we're all around a phone, just hanging out, just literally hovered, huddled around a phone, listening to you guys. And anytime you guys brought us up, the boys just ear to ear grinning. We could not have appreciated you guys more. Uh, so we had a blast. The boys did great. And the potential there is just sky high. The goals pro bracket. They want to make the bracket. They can do it. I know they can. They know they can. So now let's get them to London. Uh, and then I cast it with LVT. Absolutely insane. Foe versus Proton. Proton went up to nothing. And uh, didn't go well from, for them from there on out. They, uh, they got reverse swept. Uh, I was on the mic for it with Mikowski and Woodham. Look at Woodham go. Look at Woodham go. <laughs> yeah. How did that come about? You getting the chance to cast with LVT? So they reached out maybe a week and a half prior to the event, maybe two weeks. Don't really remember the timeline, but they reached out and said, hey, you available? You're going to be there. I'm like, yeah, I'll be there. But I got this team that I need to be with. And they're like, no problem. Whenever you're ready, you let us know. Uh, and don't rush. Like LVT, they're literally the best. Like, yeah, don't stress. Don't rush. Go eat food after your team's eliminated. They didn't say if, but I was saying <laughs> if. Like, you never know, know. Maybe we just win the fucking thing. Um, <laughs> oh my I will God. always say that for the boys. Maybe I won't be available all weekend. But hey, uh, That's right. No. So they were super good about it, because I think I would have had an opportunity maybe Friday night, but I felt it was important. Go be with the team for the team dinner. Uh, and then, you know, it was kind of a roll of the dice, whether or not I had an opportunity Saturday. Uh, and LVT, they, they found, found a pocket of time where maybe they needed a, a little relief. So I got to get in for one series, and I could not have been luckier. Uh, it could not have went... I mean, obviously, I have things I can work on, and I've watched it back and try to learn and get better. But in terms of... Like, I couldn't ask for much more in terms of an opportunity and how much fun and how good the series was. So cool. That's awesome. And an unbelievable series, too. Yeah. yeah. Like, one of the best series of the tournament, for being honest. So... I thought so. I don't want to say it, but yeah, it's so cool. Reverse sweep. Like, with, yeah, Mikowski, Mikowski's energy the whole time, too. Like, just to give you some background, like, I was nervous, and I, like, you can feel yourself, like, you're in the moments. So you're not, like, thinking too deeply, but, but, like, you can feel the shaky voice. Your voice, you know, doesn't sound like it normally might, um, because you lack a bit of confidence. And I was doing, like, I was trying to stay in the game, so I was, like, hands on the knees, like, staring at the monitor, like, just trying to be the Spartan, mm -hmm. and Max started doing it with me. So I think he, he was doing everything he could to make sure I was comfortable, and shout out to Mikowski. That was a big difference. Fuck yeah. Yeah. So, Good times. you talked about Passion United, you talked about casting. H how was the event overall then? We know... Like just you talked about the venue for a little bit, but like how was the event overall from a spectator perspective? Uh, in short, like I th I think it was good. I think it ticked the boxes. I think if it's a pass or fail, great. I think it's a pass. Um, there was one series that took forever in a day. I think it was like Sentinels Cloud Nine. I don't. I yeah. think it was on the far left feature station. I, yeah. I didn't really know what was going on. I wasn't really getting my nose in that. I was kind of doing a couple things maybe, but. I don't think it was to the point where the general atmosphere and the general conversation at the venue was about that. Like maybe very briefly while it was happening, like in passing, yeah, that series is still going. Who knows what the hell's going on over there? <laughs> you come to expect that to happen maybe once. And it really felt like it only happened once. Yep. Um, so all in all, I would say, you know, maybe eight points. Wow, see, I'm pretty biased because I, had my team there and the LVT thing. But like the general spectator experience, like in the eights, 8.3 out of 10, 8.4, somewhere in that neighborhood, like definitely a pass and excellent time would go again. I had a blast. Awesome. And Ogre 2 is there as well with a gang of uh, friends. He was. Very nice of him to uh, make an appearance. Indeed. I think he, because, Will, we, we've seen him at one as well last year. I wonder how many he's been to now. No matter what, two, him? maybe three. I, was it Kansas City that we saw him? It, it may have been Kansas City last year, yeah. He was at Orlando. Oh, so I, I saw him at Orlando. 
watching at that time, I think it was Phase. Or no, sorry, Sentinels. Like the huh. current Phase roster was on Sentinels. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was, he was watching those boys. All right. Well, shout out Ogre too. Yeah. But definitely. Um, sweetness. He was at Raleigh as well for the first event. Well, he just fucking makes his way everywhere. Also, Meeks, thank you for the follow. <laughs> Sorry for missing that earlier. Thank you very much. Welcome to the show. All right, awesome. PD, anything else you wanted to, to discuss about Arlington before uh, before you take off for the night? Oh, man. I, I'll be honest. Maybe I'll get this book. I want you to see this book quickly. Yeah, go get the book. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll go get the book. Give me give me 35 seconds. You're all good. Huh. While he goes and gets the book, I have an update for something we talked about earlier with the Hydra Gaming um, ladies tournament that took place over the weekend. It was Veronica that put out the reply to somebody on Twitter, and uh, her reply is, um, there's always going to be teams that feel stacked, even with tears, but also there's nothing wrong with your idea either. There hasn't been any confirmation at the uh, uh, confirmation of what the next random attorneys will be like, but trying to work to come up with something that feels even more balanced. And then she goes on to say, I found that par- uh, picker wheel has team picker wheel. You can assign players a group. I did a test run with groups A, B, C, and D, 16 players per group. I put the highest ranked or placing players in a group A and so on and so forth, and it definitely created more balanced and less stacked teams. So it sounds like she was testing something on the side as well to see if something could work in the future. Um, not saying that that's what's going to be used in the future, but at least there is your confirmation that they are working on um, trying to make things more balanced or thinking of ways to make things more balanced for future tournaments. And the feedback does not fall on deaf ears, which is great to see. And I'm going to get those replies added to the show notes right now while we wait awesome. for PD. And speaking of which, there's PD oh. and Moose and the book. PD and Moose. There we go. Perfect timing. War Eagle, welcome back. Says, gotta love the Pash United jersey in the background. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're back. I found welcome a moose. Back. Welcome back, PD. Oh. Welcome, Moose, to the show. And, uh... Moose? You say hi, Moose? Look at that good dog right there. That's, that's a, a good boy. That's a good pup. And here's our book. Leading with Passion. Yeah, maybe I'll read you. I've read like three pages. There's one good passage so is far. There, is there like a synopsis of what it's all about? Gives you the overview. Yeah, it's the hokey pokey. You turn yourself around. <laughs> That's what it's all about. I I, I can't oh, read, read that. that. I can't, I can't read, read that. that. <laughs> all right. Okay. Give us that passage. What's that passage? Okay, there's one. Go ahead. There's one. <laughs> This is not an advertisement for this book, by the way. This is just something that PD grabbed from his work that was getting rid of shit. And uh, yeah, here we go. So I don't know. I, I think on my own stream, I'm going to start like reading them occasionally, maybe a command or something, because mm-hmm. so far I'm liking what I'm hearing after like seven pages. But this is a quote from Margaret Mead. Shout out her. Never doubt that a small group of committed people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Man. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Shout like out, it. Shout <laughs> Lots out to, of heavy hitters. Shout out to Juan in the chat because he goes, uh, pure passage. <laughs> That's, <laughs> I yeah. think that perfectly encapsulates this situation that we're in right now. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, <laughs> it seems like a good book. I'll uh, I'll give better feedback once I'm a little further in. Perfect. See if I can find this thing. It's on Amazon. Oh, is it? By John J. Murphy? Yeah, yeah, I got it here. Okay, okay. Good also, um, PD, while well, you went to go look for the book, I, I found the... Um, it was Veronica that was talking about the feedback for the Hydra gaming event. So, right. Was that the Onyx comment? Like each team should have one. No, this is uh she said she found that picker wheel has team picker wheel. 
And she said, you can assign players a group. And she did a test run with groups A, B, C, and D, 16 players per group. Put the highest ranked placing players in group A and so on and so forth. It definitely created more balance and less stacked teams. That's a great idea. She she said, like, again, that was just a test thing that she did. Um, but she did yeah. say that, like, they're 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 taking the feedback. They're trying to find ways to improve for the future. Yeah, so that's, like, my draft tournaments that we run over there at Pass United. I give the captains a list of the 48 people they can draft organized by, I can't remember what I did, but I give them two options. It's sorted by one of highest ever CSR attained mm -hmm. by all the players, but then there's a second column saying current CSR. Okay. So, they, so at the end of the day, it's similar, uh, not completely random. So the captains do have some choice uh, if they want to play with a friend or, you know, yeah. Similar. Similar but different. Sounds good. Awesome. A lot well, of options out there. There are. There are a lot of options out there out there. PD, is there anything else you'd like to say? Uh before because you said you need to take off, so I don't want to keep you for any longer if you need to take off. Any uh any closing statements for me, sir? Uh thank you to you guys. I continue to try and tune in every Wednesday as often as I can. It's been a bummer. They've had me on the late shift at work quite often on Wednesdays. So I usually miss the first hour and a half. Um, but anyone in chat, like you guys, Josh and Will, so freaking cool. And uh, hopefully see you guys at an event real soon. Thanks for having me. Hopefully see an event as well. Uh, Beth, but before you go, PD, Beth says, PD should come back and read a passage every show. PD's passionate passages could be the segment title. I think this oh, book is unreal. cooking. I think this book's, book is cooking. We, we might have enough in here. We, we could uh, potentially make that happen as long as PD has the time. Uh, as long as I'm not freaking at the pension prison. Locked in at work trying to get a pension. Or what we Wait, could jo do. Josh, you wanted you wanted intro music. What we'll do is just oh, get PD to record a bunch of voice lines. That's I and was play them over the. I was gonna intro. say if he it, like PD and if you if you didn't have the time yeah. to be on the show, like you, we could literally have you just record <laughs> these segments and we could just inter fun. intersperse them within the show. Quick little one minute story time, little passage of passion. Oh my god. Uniting us through passages. Holy shit. It'll become the HCS oh. Bible. There it is. There it is. Leading with passion. Ten essentials for inspiring others. Oh my god. Seems alright so far. I don't want to hype it up too much. So far impression is good. I, was just saying, I don't want people to think this is like an advertisement for the book when it's literally no, just no. you finding I found the book this at work. and then just reading passages from it. So this book could be decades old. I don't know how long it was in that cabinet for, but uh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's sad, but I better boogie. But thank you so much, you guys. You guys are absolute legends. Know you and uh, yeah. have a wonderful yeah. rest of the show. Hopefully, we can play Halo soon, and we'll catch up real soon. Fuck yeah! You have a great Sounds night, PD. Good, Will anything you want to say before PD takes off? No, just thanks for taking the time, and yeah, hopefully we'll we'll get some games in soon. When the time aligns. Oh, yeah. All Fuck right. Yeah. Have a good night, guys. Bye, have PD. Good night, everybody. We'll see you. Later, later. Thank you all for being here. PD, thanks again for stopping by. Greatly appreciate you and everything that you do. Always uniting the passion. And uh, you have a birthday shout-out coming on later. I We should have said happy belated birthday to you uh, when you were on. But don't worry. You have a birthday shout-out coming on later on in the show. So stay tuned for that, as always. All right. Will, that's it for the topic, which means let's get into some regular news. Silver Debrief Halo by 343. The final episode of the second season of the Halo TV show is out now. And yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty fucking good. I enjoyed good. it. Yeah, it was pretty fucking good. So uh, you should go check that out if you're interested in the show. Because I, I will say, season two is monumentally better than season one in my opinion and we finally got to see some storylines make sense 
specifically Quans. Yeah. It only took to the end of the fucking season for it to happen, but we got there um, with easily the biggest reveal of the entire season. And it's not 100% confirmed, but I think it was Kiki Wolfkill who said in, it might be even in that article, like she basically said that season three is going to happen. But again, season three is not officially confirmed if I'm not mistaken. So there you got, there you go. But either way, yeah, it, I, and the cool part is I think this, the season got progressively better as it went on. So not only was it a, a monumentally better in the first season, it just continued to get better as the season went on. So go check that, check that out if you're interested and then read that article after the fact once you've watched the episode. Or don't, and that's fine too. Then we have Halo Infinite playlist updates by Halo Support. We already talked about Stronghold Solitude being removed. But the recently added community-made BTB maps are now evenly weighted with the existing BTB maps. So again, for those who for those who may have forgotten, when the new community BTB maps were added to the playlist, they were weighted more heavily. Uh, or actually, no, the other ones I think were flat out removed. Yeah, I think the I think the originals were flat out removed for that week. And now that that week has passed, the other maps have been re-added, and now it's even waiting across the board. So there you go. And then finally, new Halo gear rewards is by Halo. Earn access to the exclusive Yappening 2 pin and patches for Spirit of Fire and Cyber Showdown 3 when you complete any of the three operations. So, yes, that means, and I, 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 I'm the witness here because I did this myself, um, I still have one tier left to go on my Cyber Showdown 3 uh, event pass thing, operation pass. So the only one that I've actually completed was um, the Spirit of Fire operations pass. I got my code via Waypoint. I entered in the code for the discount. And yeah, I was able to purchase the pin and both patches for just completing one of the operations passes. So you're not going to miss out on anything as long as you either complete the cyber showdown three in this week, or you complete the yapping two pass next week. And yeah, there you go. Get your pin, get your patches and good shit. And that's it for the regular news. Got a games. Watch will it happened. It fucking happened. The rocker were shit throughout the qualifier. The rocker remained shit in the land. They got their one. They got their one good placing for the year. I don't, I'm not going to go out. I'm not going to fucking do the whole. I was right thing right now, but I will say that will this happen? This happens every year. The team gets a good land placing typically one. And then it's basically downhill from there. Or maybe it's downhill for the season. Then you have that one little uptick with the good placing at, at the major, and then it's just downhill for the rest of the season. Yeah, it's uh, it's a little crazy how we keep putting th- these teams together, and they feel like they're kind of the hodgepodge teams. I don't know how else to say it. The redheaded stepchild. Well, and it's also like we pick up players who were good in the previous game when, you know, skill does translate game, game to game, but every game's a little different. And maybe, maybe we need to switch up the formula a little bit. I just think we it cl- clearly something's got to give because the, the top teams in the leagues basically consistently are there. Like you have the ultra, you have the subliners, you have optic, you have phase. Um, the thieves have dramatically dropped off because I think it's mainly due to like everybody left basically. Sure. So sure. there's that, but like, yeah, these, the, the top players are still the top players and it, you, you, we see what happens if you make like a singular move or whatever, um, phase dominated the major phase. They, abs- they absolutely dominated the major. Um, they made the change. They picked up Draza, um, in the off season. So, he is the the new fourth on phase. So he has been the new fourth on phase. And they basically haven't skipped a beat when you think about it. So congratulations to phase for winning. Um, and the rocker are still ass. What's up, tools? Welcome <laughs> back. 
And then the leftovers. Yeah, tools, basically. Yeah. What I was trying to say there. <laughs> I'm not reading that, Justin. <laughs> Fuck yourself. Um. So yeah, that's it for Connor Games Watch, which means it's time for World's Adventures with the Veil Overs. <gasps> oh, you played a game I wasn't expecting you to play. Well, uh, wait, and other games too. Well, what yeah. you play? <laughs> well, what you play last week? What an intro. Whoa. Right, all right, you're um, welcome. Halo Infinite still grinding, oh, I yeah. guess. Um, Grinding. I, you know, we talked a little bit. Snakebite said it in a statement about how the game can feel so different for so many people. Yes. And with the new update, there's games that my shot feels like it's registering perfectly. I feel like I'm on top of the world. But then I have games where I'm like, I just shot blanks into that dude again. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. The, the movement around the maps feels wonderful, but the registration is what co- keeps coming up, and I'm not sure what it is. I definitely have had a couple instances of heavy aim. Like, I upped my sense today, like my acceleration, everything, Okay. and I had a fight I was in. The guy jumped, and I tried to move my reticle up, and it just, like, slow, like, great through mud. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. So, that's definitely there again in my opinion, and I don't know. I'm still going to play the game. I just I feel like with no matter what we have, it's what what are the pros and cons, because we're going to have cons, we're going to have good things um, with these updates. But besides Infinite, played Helldivers 2. Yep. Um, major orders right now are basically to clear out the automatons. The robots? The little the robots did a little bit of that. And I was like, eh, I like fighting the bugs better. Went back and fought the bugs. I respect it. I, I got enough super credits to unlock one of the premium battle passes, all earned in game, which is great. I love that you can do that. That is, but now, it's something that should be commended that you can, that you literally can earn everything in game. So, yeah. and, and really like those super credits and whatnot, you can earn more by just completing additional objectives on the map by exploring so on and so forth. So like, it, it's really cool that you're able to do that. And it, again, it needs to be commended that for a fucking $40 experience that you're able to do all that. So go ahead. Will. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, um, they, they came out with a second premium battle pass though, or like tears. So I'm now I'm confused. I'm like, which one do I get? Does this first one expire ever? Do I, or do I go for the brand new stuff that came in too? Oh, so I need to look into that and then spend my credits wisely. Um, and then last night, Joey's been trying to play some Valorant and I'm like, I'll do it <laughs> and played a couple of games. It's, um, we, he only wants to play ranked. So we jump into ranked and at my level, which is not high at all in Valorant. Cause I don't ever play this game. Right. Um, it's, it's crazy. The, the disparity in skill, there's a ton of Smurfs and you can tell by their account names and everything else, but there's a ton of Smurfs in that bronze area of the game. And it just, it get, for me, it just got frustrating. We, we won a match in like quadruple overtime and they only had one player on their team that was basically carrying. And it was obviously a Smurf. It, it was a name and like 10 numbers after it. In, in the in the gamer tag. So it's like, come on, dude. Like we we literally just said, take out this one player, we win the match. And that's what we tried to focus focus okay. on. Um but yeah, played some Valorant. And that's that's all I played for the week. What about you, Josh? I played some Halo Infinite. Like I said, I have one tier left to go, which basically like one firefight game and I'll have that tier completed and then I'll have Cyber Showdown three complete um in preparation for yapping. Um, and then, yeah, that's, that's kind of it. Realistically, we kind of played a mm. hodgepodge of a couple other things, but yeah, that's really it. Um, <laughs> Ronan, do you see Helldivers lasting or is it going to be dead in three months? Obviously I hope it lasts to me. It really depends on what the developers add and like how they continue to support the game because The amount of like build diversity looks nice. 
Um, and they have added some really cool things so far. My only worry is if it's going to take them too long to add an additional enemy type. Because well, I go ahead. So Will. here's 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 what I'm thinking. Right now, we are about to defeat the automatons. Like they are almost eradicated. Okay. But we've like the thing with hell divers. I got to go back a little bit. Is there's you can just go in, do the missions. It's fun, but there's lore behind it too. Like we are going to push back the automatons, but we found like a, we found information that they were planning like this massive, a massive attack, this massive push. And when you look on the world map, it kind of shows you, you know, it's a big circle. The automatons are on the left, the bugs are on the right. And like that's, there's nothing on the top or bottom. So I'm assuming what's happening is we are going to knock out that left side and then either a new enemy or the automatons are going to attack somewhere else. And we've seen some instances on some of the worlds where you find you're like you're, you're fighting the automatons, but then you see a bug carcass or vice versa. You're fighting the bugs and see automaton stuff. So I have a feeling there's going to be some new stuff in the game very soon. <laughs> Especially like that, the big major order is to defeat the automatons, and then something else is going to cut push in in another wave. Okay, and I think that the fact that the game is like a living war like that will keep players there because there's always going to be something more to do. Okay. Yeah, I'm just again to never want a game to fail, never want a game to like end its life cycle, whatever it may be. I, it, to me, it really just depends on what the, what the devs continue to add to it and how quickly they do. So that's, that's where I'm at currently with it. Sure. So we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the build diversity. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Really what you can do. I just hit level 25. So I unlocked the, the mech stratagem, yes. which is going to be fun. But um, my build right now is my heavy weapon I carry is an arc thrower, and it's good for clearing out multiple enemies. That's the lightning one, right? Yep. It shoots out a shock bolt. It can chain to enemies. It's great. Yes. But not really good against the heaviest of enemies with armor. So I'm hoping my teammates have like there's anti-tank rockets that you can get that will take out like some of the chargers, some of the bigger bugs, or if there's your stratagems, which you can call in like call in strikes, you know, drop bombs, drop lasers, whatever. But I, I, you're right. There's a ton of different build diversity. Something I've been running lately that people don't often think of is I run an EMS turret. So that shoots out like a EMP pulse that will slow down enemies. They get stuck in that pulse and then you throw your you throw your your bombs as you're down and or or just nade them out and they end up not getting to the objective and it just makes it so much easier on the team. Like yeah, I, I lose the ability to carry something else, but having an EMS turret to stop people advancing forward, that's that can be huge. Love it. Average Halo guy says my PC is undemocratic and keeps crashing on hell divers. Oh no. Um I would check because there was a small update the other day and it reverted all of my settings to Epic on hell divers. Oh shit. So that was causing performance issues. I didn't realize. And I was like stuttering horribly in a game and I'm like, what the hell? And then figured out that, yeah, it, it reverted all the settings to Epic in the game. So I had to turn those down just a little bit, dial it down. I, uh, the, the one thing I'll say is that the game is still buggy. And I mean that in a literal sense, not in a pun, I mean, <laughs> not in a pun intended sense. Because Will of the the time that we played, where I got stuck in the water, and yeah. the the literal bugs could not kill me. But um, you were stuck there. Yeah, I was stuck there, and we were in a we were in a bit um, over our heads in that mission. I guess you could say. You but, wanted to try just two stacking it. I but mean. hey, we did though. And we finished we it. We did. We did. We finished it and we extracted. We actually did it. Um, but yeah, hopefully they get those things ironed out. Uh, but it was it was kind of funny to experience because we're just like, we're screaming, trying to figure out what the fuck we're going to do. Um, and yeah, it all worked out in the end, but it was funny. 
That seems the graphics card drivers to get fucked and had to full uninstall and reinstall my graphics drivers. That fucking blows, man. Holy That's shit. That's insane. That really sucks. Um, tried Dragon's Dogma 2. Yes, I have um, on PS5. I have it on the PS5 right now. So, yeah. It's all right so far. I don't think it's, like, I'm very early on, so I don't think it's amazing by any means necessary, but I think it's fine so far. It's not bad. I think people are blowing, like, do I wish it played at 60 FPS? Yes. Is it a, is it awful that it plays at 30 or dips a couple times? No, it's not awful. People need to, people need to get their fucking heads out of their asses. People are stupid. It's not that big of a deal. Um, yeah, it's pretty fun so far. I guess I could have added that to the shit I played because, but that was like a very, I did not play a lot of it. Actually, I will say I have, I have picked back up because this is something I've been waiting for and I don't know what update it was, it was introduced in, but, uh, I picked back up, um, the latest Forza Motorsport and, uh, don't play it on PC. I'll say that. Don't play it on PC. That game, maybe it's just me. Like me for others that are playing on a PC, I hope you're enjoying it. Like for me personally, it was a rough mess. So I'm only playing on Xbox. Um, but one of my biggest criticisms, one of my biggest criticisms of it is that it forced you. It forced you to run practice laps because one of the big things was like you earn car XP now for like having clean sections for take for having really good turns. You earn like car XP throughout and one of the ways you continue to earn car XP is through those practice laps. Um, but I don't know what update it was, but I, I booted it up because like they, they had a couple updates that intrigued me and, um, and, uh, I, I didn't see anything about the removal of the, of the mandatory practice lab. So I booted up just to see, and it said, skip practice. I'm like, no fucking way. They put it in the game. So, <laughs> uh, I'm so fucking glad that I can just get to the race immediately now and not yeah. have to deal with the practice. And, um, I also love how, so with the car XP, right. Um, for those, for those who care about Forza, cool. For those who don't, I'm sorry. I'm going to talk about this for a second because this is, I think it's funny and I think it's a good change that they made with the car XP system. Um, the more levels you would get, or for every level you would get, you would get points that you could use to upgrade your, that car, like, or not just that car, but upgrade cars. Okay. Um, but now they've introduced a way to where you can convert credits like used to like purchase cars and whatnot. You, they now introduced a way to convert credits into car points. So Hmm. now because I have so many credits, like I have almost a million credits in the game. Um, now they made it so like, oh, I can immediately pick one of my existing cars, skip all the having to do the practice shit and whatnot to earn those car points and whatever. And I can just convert some credits into car points and buy upgrades right away. So I, I love the change that they made there. Um, streamlining it a little bit. Absolutely. And it's a Forza game. You're if for, if you know what a Forza game is, it plays like a Forza game. And I'm, t- I'm not talking about Horizon. I'm talking about sim-based Forza Motorsport. It's great. I love it. And I'm so fucking glad they made it so you don't have to do the practice laps anymore. Because it was such a dumb, mundane thing. And here's the thing, too. If you did the practice laps, absent, I don't know if it was different for you, but at least for me, and I like, I just did it the way the game had it set up. If you do the practice laps, it didn't matter how well you did in the practice laps because it was like, it was literally, Will, it was literally a, we're talking about practice. It wasn't, oh, yeah. it wasn't like qualifying where right. you did, it didn't impact where you are on the grid. Like practice was literally just practice where guess what? It didn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter in that game. It doesn't matter in Halo either. I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, it just didn't affect your grid places. Like, why the fuck do I have to do this? And I'm so glad that they made it not mandatory anymore. You can skip it for every single fucking race. And yes, yes, yes. Great fucking change. Great change. So yeah, absent. Feel free to pick it back up now because it's great. It's fucking great. I'm so happy. 
Holy shit. So. What's up? In Forza. Yeah. Were you able to do car setups like, like kind of like F1 has it where you can change the brake, the differentials, yeah. the way, like whatever alignments. Yeah. So, I mean, that's really what practice is used for. But as a player, you probably. Well, and see, here's the thing. It's like I play. Care. Well, that's the thing, right? Is that it, there are there are multiple type of types of Forza players, just like there's more t- multiple types of like Gran Turismo players. I fall more on the casual side of things. I just love playing racing games. I want to get in, do my races, and get out. I'm not focused on my fuel levels, my tire pressure levels, um, how cool my brakes are. Like, I'm not focused on that type of stuff, right? I'm focused on get me in the race. I want to race, finish my race. I got other stuff to do, okay? So I focus more on the casual side of things. But because this is a simulation based racing game, if you do want to get into the nitty gritty, you can, you have that ability to do so. So yes, that is in the game still. Um, so yeah, thank you, Ronan. I'm happy for me too. Like I'm genuinely so, I know it sounds so (laughs) stupid, but it's those little things, right? It's those little things that can make or break an experience for you as a player of the game. And it's not just sports. It's like, it's any game out there. It could be one little thing. It's like, man, fuck. If just this thing was different, it just increased my enjoyment so much. You want, I'll, I'll spin it in another direction. Something that would actually, and I genuinely mean this, something that would actually increase my like excitement levels for the game. And we'll already mentioned it kind of offhand, like with hell divers, but just giving you abil- you the ability to change the colors of your armor. Like yeah. the fact that I that I cannot change the colors of my armor in Helldivers, it's it's such a small thing. It's just such a small thing that does not impact gameplay at all. But if they just gave you that ability, like if they just had a color picker, right? Like old school Halos. I, like we don't need the extravagance of Halo Infinite stuff, but like just give me a color picker. I'd be like, it can set else. It'll make me separate myself from everybody else. It'll make me feel unique in that sense. And like, I'm getting out there with my own custom guy and fucking saving democracy, you know? So part of the lore of hell dive, like you have to earn your armors and hell divers, right? Mm -hmm. From the whatever that call it a battle pass, call it spending war bonds, whatever from the game. But the story of war of hell divers is hell divers are expendable you're going to die. Like the, the reason your voice faults to random versus you picking a voice when you play the game is because they want you to feel like a different hell diver every time you come down. Sure. So like the whole being unique is like trying to, it's not there because they're trying to make a play on you're a soldier. You're in the military. We don't give a shit. Just go do the, the job. Sure. But I give a shit. So sure, that, that's, sure. I understand. And the fact that like you get so many different armor variants as well, like that's great. I love, I love how you have like a lot of different armor choices and they can all be earned in game, which is fucking rad. Love that. It's just, even if they, even if they just had like different color sets per armor set, like just, just something to spice it up a little bit. That's all. I just want to spice it up a little bit. So that's all. That's fair. That's um, fair. But yeah, Forza, they made it great now, but just based off a couple fucking tweaks that really make the experience so much better. So shout out to the Turn 10 team on doing that. And it just made me, it, it, I know it sounds cliche and stupid, but it made me a bigger fan. So I like getting back in there now. I'm very happy about it. Very, very happy. That's really all I played. So there you go. I wish multiplayer wasn't a wreck fest in Forza. See, absent, that's the thing is that, again, I come from a very casual perspective when it comes to racing games that I don't play multiplayer in the middle. Like, I I, I strictly fork, forkus, I, I forkus on the Forza um, career mode. Uh, <laughs> I, I focus mainly on the career mode. So that's, that's what I go for. Maybe I'll dibble dabble in some of the events that they have going on because I think it's cool that they add those. I did that in Horizon. Um, so... Forkus Forza Racing. That's right. 
Jesus Christ. Okay. That's all I played. Let's get into some shout outs. <laughs> Happy belated birthday to Pure Delight. Thank you very much again, PD, for joining us on the show. Hope you have a great night and a happy belated birthday to you, sir. Hope you liked the little video that uh, we sent in. And shout out to Sin for putting that all together. What a fucking badass. Um, shout out to everyone who joined in the eights on Monday. That is Riz, Snag, Rasta Monkey Jr., Elated Dartboard, Watsy, Carnage, and One-Eyed Chief. Shout out to everyone who followed and subbed during the live show. We have... Absent with the eight month resub, Riz with the 10 month resub, Uncle Puppy with the 19 month resub, Beth with the 47 month resub. You all get a woo! And Meeks, thank you very much for the follow. Daddy, thank you for the bit. Hashtag bit by bit, as always. And then shouts everyone who's a patron at the semi pro and higher tiers. That includes Blackout, Barnaby Jones, Remedy Bootshead, Honcho, Watsy, Dakota, Christian, D Pancakes, Ashley, Voodoo Man, Ross Monkey Jr., Ricky Der Snegu, Raider, Hater, Peanut Butt, One Small Daddy, Daddy Phantom, Rizdex, Zarners, Obby Dam, Mr. Smiley, High Tech, Redneck, Goalie Sniper, The Only Neeb, Heavy Rain, Fall, Eddie Lane, and Artboard. Thank you very much for the extra support over on the Patreon. And Will. Yeah. It's the end of the month, and I don't think we did anything yet, have we? Nope. <laughs> All right. So we have to get on that. Um, and we will eventually. So stay tuned for that stuff. It'll be fun. Um, community yep. creations, Haley memes every day, rent.com forward slash r forward slash memes. Go check them out. HCS Arlington photo albums. We have one by Meg and one by the HCS. So go check those links out in the Google Doc of the show. It's the show. Exclamation point. Show in chat. I agree with Summit. Kind of. This is a video mm-hmm. by All and Juan. Go check that video out. Great as always. We have Forge Features from March 21st, 2024 by 343. Check out that article. And then we have the Temperance Battle Royale Map and Mode by Distorted Jackal. And uh, I hope it's good because I think we might, uh, depending upon how many people we have attend, Will... Uh, we might try it out in the community play date on Friday. So I think it'd be a, a little fun test to see how it goes. And then finally, the story of the first EU pro halo team by Looney. Go check that video out. All the links to everything we talk about are in the show notes as always. Yeah, I did watch. Um, Ubernick p- played the temperance battle Royale mode the other day and, and he, he did not get a full lobby but he was really curious how it would run in a full lobby. Okay. Either way, it ran well the lobby with the lobby size they had. So, all right. Uh, yeah, looks like a good time. Fuck yeah. Zippy, I didn't say this earlier, but welcome back. I did see you earlier. Welcome back. It's good to see you. Shout out to Looney and the EU boys. Shout out to Looney and the EU boys. Yes. Shout out indeed. And we appreciate you, Juan. We appreciate you. Will, that's all I got. So if you would do me a favor and uh, plug this fucking show, dude. As always, you can find us on your favorite pad, pod, pad pa- case, pancake podcast service. <laughs> <laughs> search for HCS Pro Talk. Your pad case. Oh, damn it. Pad case. Um, <laughs> iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, Josh's favorite. Always taking a drink. Caught him at a good time. Pocket cast, not an ad. As Josh mentioned, we do have a Patreon doing some extra content, extra audio show, video show, Q&A. Go check it out. Patreon.com slash HS Pro Talk. We have our Discord. Join the community discussion. We keep, we're, we're there all week in the Discord hanging out, so go check it out. You can find it on Twitter. Estimation point, Discord, and chat. Speaking of Twitter, social media sites, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. TikTok. Yes, TikTok. Uh, we have a YouTube, youtube.com slash HGS Pro Talk, where all of our VODs go up, old interview series that we've done, and many other things. Go check out the YouTube, including the shorts done by the incredible All in One. If you listen to us on the audio version or check out the VODs and you want to be live, twitch.tv slash HGS Pro Talks. Currently Wednesday, 7 p.m. Central Time. And then make sure to check out the fine folks over at Podcast Evolve at HaloEvolve.co. Your home for Halo. Beautiful. I nailed it this time.
We got it. We got it. They have great shows such as Podcasts Evolve, Mission Debrief, Halo TV Plus, Book Club, Build with Blocks, Halo Headlines, and Halo Gear Guide. Do it up. Do it. Will, is that all you got? That's all I have. Well, ladies and gentlemen, then, with that, we are going to go right up Sin because she's got Ladies Night going on right now. Hey, yo. Um... So we're going to go show her some love. So stay tuned for the raid, please. And that's going to do it for episode 332 of HCS Pro Talk. If you're tuning in live, thank you very much for doing so. Hope you uh, had a great old time. And again, stay tuned for the raid, please. Um, If you're tuning in via YouTube or your favorite podcast service, thank you as well. Hope you enjoy it. And uh, yeah, I, we're going to talk. I'm just going to say this right now for next week depending upon like what other news comes out for next week. Um, we're going to talk more about the network update and how good it's been for some and how bad it's been for others because we've been seeing, like I personally, I've been seeing a lot of clips online. Um, like a lot of, a lot of clips on like the negative side, uh, some clips on the good side, a lot of posts on the bad side, a lot of posts on the good side. I think it'd be a good conversation that we could have for next week, depending upon the other news that comes out. So stay tuned for that. We'll be back next week to talk about that. And uh, probably a bunch of other shit. Who fucking knows? You guys are great. Have a great fucking night. I need to get the buttons ready again because I always fuck this up. All right. That's going to do it for us. Have a great weekend. Week and weekend. And then we'll see you next week. But until then, bye-bye.